That looks very phallic, doesn't it? All right, how do we uh, get the... Uh... Well, it does. I'm not saying I'm proud of that fact. I'm just saying... All right, keep in mind, I originally did this all in PowerPoint, but I have my Linux box with me, so, and quite frankly, um, OpenOffice doesn't do particularly well with PowerPoint files. So this is the PDF version of it. Essentially, what I'm going to be talking about in this uh, relatively short speech is the uh, programmable HID USB keyboard dongle. Um, and I'll go into what that is all about here shortly. First of all, a little bit about me. I went on geek.com. I have an interest in infosec education, and uh, I don't know everything I'm going to keep time my hands. Pretty much the same thing I have in every single one of my speeches. All right, first, a little bit of story about how this whole came, got dick came about and the project. I was given this little device at uh, ShmooCon 2010 for uh, doing a talk in the Fire Talks. This is something called a Phantom Keystroker. You go to Fink Geek, you'll see this thing. Essentially, what it is, is you plug it in to the side of a computer and you can set little switches on the side to do different things. You have a timer, you can turn caps lock on and off, uh, type some weird keystrokes, and move the mouse around. Essentially, you plug it in the back of someone's machine and annoy the living hell out of them. Because at random times, it starts typing crud, it starts turning caps lock on and off, that kind of garbage. But I started thinking about this. This would be a really cool thing if you could program it to send the keystrokes you want. So I started looking around for a way of doing just that thing. Now, while I was there, I saw uh, Darren Kitchen from Hack 5. Everybody here wa watch Hack 5? It's an interesting video podcast. And I went up to him and uh, said, because I know he'd been working with uh, uh, the U3 uh, hack saws. I said, you know what? I was just giving this gift, and I was wondering, I want this way of making this thing programmable, because that would be a really cool project to work with. So while I was there, he said, well, I've been kind of working on it. Uh, me and Robin Wood, I'm like, oh, cool. And he was going to send me a demo unit later on. Well, I got impatient. I started looking around for something to do. And uh, I found a chip that would allow me to do it. So I posted on Twitter that I found a chip that would let me make a programmable head device. And Robin Wood said, yeah, strange enough, we're using the exact same Tensi for a project. I didn't know they were using the exact same thing. Devious minds think alike. So they're doing their project in parallel with the project I'm doing. Um, they're going to eventually put out something called the USB rubber ducky. And actually, I think the most recent episode, they've actually done a little bit of talking about it. Um, so essentially, uh, playing with the idea a little bit. If you uh, want something nicer, maybe wait for Darren and Robin's tool. If you want to go ugly early, wait for a second, and I'm going to show you some diagrams. And I have all the documentation on my website, along with code to how to use it. Um, let's see. I suck at soldering, so some of the stuff I'm going to show doesn't really look particularly good. But uh, with a little time. I think I can come up with better packaging. Uh, the first question you might ask is, why would you want a programmable HID device? And let me actually give you an illustration of what these things actually look like. Let me, uh, luckily, I went upstairs. Uh, and since we have so few people, if anybody actually wants to come up and take a look at these during the speech, here's the smallest example I have. Um, what it is, is by a thumb drive size saying, I can plug it in. I use a dip switch to choose when to power it on and off. And, uh, oh, sorry, what program to use so I can set different things. Like if I want to add a user, I have this dip switch set. Or if I want to uh, automatically shovel a shell back, I have this dip switch set. With an eight uh, selection dip switch, I have a possibility of 256 combinations. I also put a photo resistor in the butt end, which I'll show a little bit about. But by plugging one of these ends in, I can either have it go off by when the lights turn on when it notices a change in light, which is basically a motion detector, or I can have it plugged in and tell it in eight hours, send these keystrokes or these mouse movements. So let's say you get on the janitorial staff as a pen tester, you plug the thing in the back, eight hours later you know an admin's gonna be logged in that machine. Well then your stuff executes. On this particular one I actually have code, now unfortunately I have my Linux box down here, not my Windows box, and all the keystrokes I have on this, they are all for, I'm going to demo it a little bit, but they're all for Windows, so it's not going to work perfectly on this, but at least you'll see that it's sending keystrokes. I have a thing on here for like uh, sending Facebook posts, you know, so you can make a stuff like that. And all the code's up on my website. Um, let me see, let me go ahead, but you know, there's all sorts of things you can do with this. It's really up to your imagination 
to uh, come up with really cool ideas for kind of payloads you want to add. But you know, add a user, run a program. I actually have a bit of code on this that what it does is it, uh, uh, well, that's the old one. What it does is it looks by a for a thumb drive by its volume name and runs some code off of it. So that gets you like U3 thumb drive functionality. The problem with U3 thumb drives is most people I'm at least hoping have auto run turned off by now. You can't turn off auto run on a USB HID. Also, it's cross platform in the sense that pretty much any modern operating system is going to recognize a USB HID, and you don't have to be an admin to install one. You just plug it in and it recognizes it. All that is really cool stuff. Um, oh, and the reason, I, by the way, I'm doing it by volume name instead of some other way is you don't know when you're plugging in a thumb drive into a machine whether or not um, what drive layer you're going to get. But you can set the volume name. So you can search for the volume name and then run stuff from there. And then in the script, by volume name once again, figure out where you want to copy your files to. So I actually have a code for doing all that. If anybody wants to see it, I need to post the, that script code on my website. I've yet to get around to doing that. Also, I was mentioning a little bit, it's a little bit like cross-site request forgery in a very weird way. I mentioned making a Facebook post from one of these things. But you could also, if you know someone has a admin access to some uh, web interface, uh, let's say maybe in a bank account, or maybe he has a web, uh, web interface access to some network uh, configuration utility, uh, it's possible that you could send the right keystrokes and have it wait eight hours or however long, or wait for motion, or eight minutes after a motion, whatever you want to program to do something and reconfigure the network or, you know, it, 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 it's whatever your imagination can let you do and figure out you want to execute on a machine and uh, whatever you can figure out keystrokes to do. All right, so I started thinking about what kind of name did I want to call this project. First idea that came up was like Minty Pwn because I actually have a model at one time I put inside of a little Altoids tin. But, I, you know, I didn't want a Lady Ada to think I was, you know, honing in on her copyright or something. Well, uh, I also thought about dip stick because I have a dip switch on here for you know, selecting what program to run. Uh, that was kind of an interesting idea. Then I thought maybe an acronym would be in order. Something that really described, oh actually, sorry, I thought maybe something that would describe what it is. A programmable head USB keyboard dongle. That describes it, but that's a mouthful. So let's do an acronym. Just fucked for short. All right. So I wanted to look around, let's see you. I wanted to build one. I had to look around for a chip that would actually do it. I found something called the Tensi. The Tensi is, depending on what kind of um, one you buy, between 18 and 21 bucks. It's actually an even bigger one that uh, costs more. But here's the one with pins. And you can't see it. It looks small from there, but it's not a very big device. Without pins, it's even smaller. Essentially, you can program in this with C or the uh, Arduino, pro Arduino programming environment. It's got a little uh, Atomega uh, microcontroller on it, and it's just really, really easy to work with. To program it, it's easy as plugging it into a mini SD, uh, sorry, mini USB connection, hitting the program button, sucks the program out of the uh, Arduino environment and onto the chip, and you're done. It's actually really easy to develop for. I have some code on my website. Uh, very small, 16 megahertz processor, 18 to 27 dollars. The higher end ones are like 27 dollars, but the ones I have here are like 21 bucks to 18 bucks, whether or not you get pins on them. USB HID support is the big thing, it's already out there. And there's a bunch of documentation on it out there on uh, the PJRC website. If you happen to order a Tensi, mention that Iron Geek sent you, because maybe he might send me some more demo units for uh, furthering this project. All right, a simple diagram of one of my Tensi circuits. Essentially, I have a few data pins here that are either low or high, depending on whether or not they're taking the ground or to 5 volts. I actually have pull-up resistors. The nice thing about the Tensi is you have in code you can set pull-up resistors to automatically set the state of all of these to be plus five volts. I have the logic set up in such a way that when it goes to ground, it means I've turned that one on. So I basically just use this to choose which program I want to run. Now you may see something here. You see the photoresistor and a resistor. You also have analog pins on the Tensi. The analog pins basically work like this. You have a reference voltage, let's say five volts. And depending on how much that five volts is dropped, at wherever you're doing the measurement on the analog pin, you get a different value between 0 and 1,023. So let's say this is a 10K resistor and the current amount of ambient light, this is 10 kilo ohms also. In theory, you should get 2.5 volts dropped at that point, which would correspond roughly around 512. However, 
as the resistance goes down on this and you get more light, more voltage is dropped across this. Since more voltage is dropped across this, the value on here starts getting higher. You get something like 900 or whatever. So you can actually program it to go on by light or by changes in light because you can say, all right, has the value changed in the last couple seconds? If it has, that probably means motion. Either someone has, you know, cast a shadow on the device or moved away from the light or maybe there's a different amount of light reflecting off of them. So it, it, it turns into a ghetto uh, motion sensor. Now this code might be a little bit hard to see, but there's really not much to the code. Uh, essentially, I'm setting the LED pin to be 11. I just use that for diagnostics because I see whether or not the light turns on or off and know whether or not code's running. I set what my output pins are. I, and uh, let's see, that's the LED pin for output, for turning it on and off. Um, pin mode, I also set data pin 2 to be an input pull-up. The pull-up thing is basically so you don't have floating voltage. Uh, it's either a five, a 5 volts or it's a ground. It, it's electronic things might be a little bit beyond what I can explain in this. And I have it hooked to a push button. Essentially, whenever that push button is red, we have an if statement. We have a loop here that just loops over and over and over again. We have an if statement inside that loop. If not digital read pin D2, just set the LED pin for diagnostic to off. That's it. If someone happens to press that button, it goes to ground and it does this. And in this case, what it's doing is it's using the modifier key, control and alt, setting those. It turns on the LED just so I know it's running the code. Uh, it then sets the modifier key 128, which happens to correspond to the Windows key. Uh, oh, actually, no, sorry, it doesn't do this. I forgot. There was a comment right here. I confused myself. It's actually not even doing anything in this line. It sets the Windows key. It then uses the R key, which brings up the run bar. It sends those keystrokes. Then, eventually, what it does is it sends notepad.exe. It sends an enter and then it just types into notepad.exe, Adrian was here. The code looks a little more complex than if you actually got a stand chance to sit down and examine it. There's not a whole lot really to it. But if you understand C, the program's easy. And actually, since Arduino is like a wrapper around C, it gets really, really easy. Um, here's my little demo, one of my demo devices out of an uh, Arduino can. You might as well come up later on and take a look at these physically and get a better idea of what they look like. Uh, but did I say Arduino can? Did I say um, Altoids tin? Let's see. Uh, other ideas I've had for this little device is um, a better hub and storage in better packaging. Essentially, I can plug the tin C into the hub and a thumb drive into the hub and package it all into one little thing, which is what I've done with this little puck device. I go through candy aisles looking for enclosures for electronic projects. It basically, I can plug this in and just have it sit there and wait. And since it already has a hub built into it and a, a little uh, flash drive and a Tensi, it's all self-contained and it can automatically go to the flash drive, run a script, and copy stuff to the flash drive. Like I have some code on here for like, I think it's copying anything either off the desktop or out of my dock. And I want to hear at a certain time or whenever it sees motion. Uh, I've had a couple of ideas for what we do. This uses like a Trojan horse. I could uh, put it in a thumb drive type enclosure and leave it around for people to pick up and use. I also thought about using Trojan hard hardware. Uh, one of my units I've been working with, it actually does something that eh, might be kind of silly, but I think it's pretty. I've essentially thought about getting a, some kind of a pyramid or something to diffuse this with, something to make it look like a little cool, glowy toy that someone might want to have in their office. Or for that matter, I could probably easy embe easily embed it inside of a mouse or a USB hardware storage, give it to somebody as a gift, and then like you know, eight hours later or by some other means, have it triggered. I'm also looking into remote control that's triggering them. Uh, I got some hardware coming for that. All this particular thing does is it does run code, but it also, you know, it does little flashy light things. With RGB LED, the nice thing about those is you can do really cool color mixing. Ah, okay, you just see it start seeing some keystrokes if I set the wrong bit switch. Yeah. <laughs> Now, the keystrokes I have this thing set up for are also, what the hell? Alright, you see how it's going through the different colors? 
You know, this is kind of a cool toy. If I put more like a little translucent pyramid on this, people might treat, leave it on their desk as like a toy, but then set to do something later on. Also, embedding in a mouse is a good option. I got a smaller one in here that, I mean, you can see the electronics could easily fit within the side of a mouse and still have a functioning mouse. Um, I, I'm thinking we're doing some more work with uh, also maybe make it brute force uh, BIOS passwords. Because at that point, you couldn't, like with BIOS passwords, I mean, you don't really have a chance to talk on it yet. But with this, you can plug it into a keyboard device and have it do your stuff. Uh, I thought about having, like, run through all the normal default backdoor BIOS passwords, just as a trial. But if you have that kind of physical access to a machine, there's probably better things you can do. Also, during that whole wake-up cycle I talked about, if you use something like a Trojan disk, you'd probably want to run some piece of code that made it look like the blue screen of death was up, or do something else to distract them so they don't see the copy files in the background. Um, so that, now that I've showed all that, I'm going to, there's a few good links out there. My code is out on my website already. Uh, Kinsey project page and so forth. The Hack5 guys are working on a, uh, a project as well, and they're using the Kinsey. It's kind of, we both came up with the idea separately, and then we started working together a little bit on it. And uh, it's kind of in parallel. And since we're, we're sending a fair amount of traffic, the guy at the uh, place that actually makes these little microcontroller boards has been working with us as well. He's going to work on helping us get uh, onboard storage and so forth. But I want to see if I can get a little demo up. Now, keep in mind, these are keystrokes were meant for Windows. There ain't no reason I couldn't make it two keystrokes for Linux instead. But right now, I have all the zips off. I have some code set depending on uh, what is uh, triggered. Like I think, I don't know when I have what hit switch. Okay, right now, whenever I move my hand or whenever I see the light change, it's set to just send the keystrokes to open up notepad, I'm oh, sorry, run notepad from the run bar. Since this isn't Windows, same keystrokes won't bring up a run bar. But you get the idea. So whenever it sees a change in the light state, it does something. Um, also, I have on this one a little diagnostic button, so I can press it and just uh, figure out what pins are low and what the current light value is. If I don't, if I wanted to adjust it for a amount of ambient light to trigger on, I could probably put a potentiometer there. But you get the idea. Uh, there ain't a whole lot to that. Um, let me see. The other one, I can actually trigger it by different levels of light. This one, I oriented more towards motion. Um, let me. Uh, we have something on my laptop bag. Yeah, this is a pop modded one. That's good enough. All right, on this one, I have a few different things set. I have this one set to go off by different levels of light. So let me plug this in. All right, right now, in a second, I'm hoping it says I'm scared of the dark. And it's typing notepad each time because it's thinking it should be on Windows. All right, it's up Hopefully here in a second, if I get a little more light on that, if it's over a certain value on that, on that uh, analog input I mentioned, it should say something, the light seems to be on. Ah, crap. So, you know, there's all sorts of things you can do with this. I'm going to show you a better example of source code since I have time anyway and I'm just filling in. Uh, I think I have my website up in the background. I got bored and got on Twitter because I can't get on with my phone and uh, hopefully no one phones me. But luckily it's Twitter, I don't know. Alright, there's my page of all the information. And uh, there's a diagram I mentioned already. But I posted some source code right here. And at the current resolution, it might be a little hard to read. Oh, another thing I didn't mention in the talk. You, you all know what uh, product IDs and uh, vendor IDs are. Basically, you, you know, they're set for that. Microsoft has their own vendor IDs and so forth. So you can kind of figure out who made a USB device. But you can also arbitrarily set them, which is there's a piece of code you can edit. I'll show it right here. To set it to be whatever. I think I set most of mine to be like Cthulhu keyboard and mouse. But if you wanted to make it look less suspicious, you could set it to be Microsoft or Logitech or whatever. Uh, here's some code. I'm just setting up what pins do what. Um, I'm just setting all the pull-ups so that they default to five volts. 
and I wait for them to go to ground to actually do something. Uh, here's a few functions I programmed in here. And uh, this first one is something real simple. Uh, it, it waits for a certain amount of time. I believe this is a, uh, oh, what did I set that for? Uh, every one minute to do something. It brings up time. It's been about a minute since I last executed current time is, and it shows the current clock time, which is like the number of milliseconds after uh, it's been plugged in. I have another version that just brings up notepad and says Aiden was here. These are all silly examples. But I mean, you can do anything you want. Make a Facebook post, add an account, uh, whatever. Execute something off a thumb drive. What's that? Yeah. That's a pose. Um, this next one uh, just runs something. Let's see, what should I set this one? Number two. Oh, yeah, this one sends control at late. The one for DIP2 just sent since control delete and locks the workstation, which is annoying, so I'm not gonna do that one. Um, let's see, once again, I'm, and I'm only using eight options on this, but with an eight position dip switch, you can set 256 different options, however you want to code it, because that's, in binary, what you can code. Um, also, let me see, this one opens up a web browser to imgeek.com, full self-promotion. Uh, let's see, oh, this one, it's a confusing one, but essentially what it does is it uses command.com, uh, or I guess it's command is whatever. Uh, I'm still thinking about some old days. Let's uh, see, uses WMIC, looks for any logical disk of type 2, you know, as in like removable, uh, finds a volume named my thumb, and basically returns to me in percent I the, the uh, path to that particular thumb drive, and then runs my script.bat off of it. It's a convoluted, ugly thing, but once it does it, it can find that particular script on whatever thumb drive by the volume name and run it. Inside that script, which I can show you later if you want to see it, um, it also does something similar to find its uh, current uh, drive path, so you can start copying files to it. And I have it set to like copy stuff off the desktop or whatever. Uh, oh, this next one is a Facebook post. I found it more convenient to use the mobile version of Facebook, but you see it starts uh, CMD, and it goes ahead and uh, does a start and brings up Facebook and whatever the default web browser is. If the person has a cookie and if they've chosen to um, save their connection and stay logged in, then this should work. Brings it up, uh, hits the right number of tabs to get to the uh, input form that it needs. Uh, then it says, test from fuck device, more info at iongeek.com, la di da la di da uh, It hits tab again, then hits enter. And that sends it. Oh, this one's that code I showed you about I'm scared of the dog, the light seems to be on, and so forth. Uh, this one, number eight, is just show diag. All that does is tell me what pins are low, which pins are high. It was useful for debugging. Uh, I've made my own little function for command bar run so that I can, I, I use that command so many times, I wouldn't want to put that in the if statement by itself because it'd be really make, it'd make the card impossible to read. Eventually, I'm going to come up with a library of other stuff. Like, for instance, in one of my newer implementations, I have a, some, a function that after it does the command run, it actually does the, uh, oh, I'm trying to remember the key sequence. It does the key sequence to shrink the window down so you don't see it running unless you look closely at the taskbar. So I'm going to make a, a list of uh, functions to make all this easier. And here's a press and release. Instead of having to type all those commands just to press and release one key, I have it all in one easy to make function. Um, let's see, show diag, that's what we explained, so on and so forth. But that's the current things I'm uh, working on. If anybody actually wants to come up and take a closer look, let me know. Or if you have any questions, uh, have at it. Yes? Uh, how long is the run bar open? I mean, uh, not too awful long. Uh, you have a Windows box? Yeah. On your, does anybody have a Windows box that trusts you enough to let me uh, plug something into it? Thank you. Uh, well, I guess we have time since uh, the next speaker, speaker is here. So, if you could give me a Windows box, I can give you a better example. Actually, Windows 7 is what I've been testing everything on, so that's good. Let me get my laptop out of the way. And, uh, These examples are company based for it. Okay. You can plug your laptop in there, and uh, I'm going to sit.
And now for Nadakan's karaoke event. All right, let me see which one I set for what. Uh, I think this do, is. Do I need to log in first? Actually, this one I'm not going to use because this one executes off a thumb drive and it copies stuff. So I probably don't want me to do that one. This one doesn't have a thumb drive hooked up. It would work, but it would. Um, since it doesn't have a thumb drive, there's no chance of it copying stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to use this one instead. Let me go ahead and set this on. And I just have this one set to go by motion. Now it's going to fail because it's going to look for that uh, my thumb volume name. And there is no my thumb volume name because I don't want to actually copy this guy's data. But have faith, it does work. And I'll actually bring up the script to show it to you here in a bit. All right, it should sense motion here eventually. Here's the biggest problem with the fuck device. It takes a bit to iterate the HID. Uh, HID devices, it's going to take a little bit longer to program it. It now says the device is ready to use. As you see, it's oscillating through colors. Now, hopefully, if I change the amount of light on that, OK, that one just detected motion. Uh, I know I have something else on here. One of the dips is something entirely different. And I'm trying to remember what the other dip is. Oh, OK, sorry. That was the control delete. <laughs> uh, would you sum up and unlock that? I'm going to say it's going to lock back on. Yeah. Well, you see, it works. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, let me. You know what? It may have seen some extra keystrokes. I'm going to unplug it. Go ahead and uh, hopefully in a second it's going to stop. Really, I'm not trying to pwn you here. It's <laughs> right. you know what, what is it waiting for? Oh, it, it's probably extra keystrokes. All right, let's try number four. All right, let me move some stuff. Oh, that's the mouse movement one. That was one I just programmed in to be annoying. <laughs> you saw it move the mouse around. Okay, bring up Notepad. Let's bring up Media Player. And see, that's that one where it runs the script and it shrinks it down. You see how ha fast that happens? Now, currently, I have it programmed to do it over and over again repeatedly. So you see it doing it over and over again. But it waits a little bit of time to make sure the program's running. Then it shrinks it down. So that's how fast it actually runs. And that's how it actually works. So you see it going out to the command font, or sorry, well, going out to the run bar, running CMD, and doing something. Uh, one of these, you logged into Facebook? I might be, actually. Uh, Okay, let me see if I can figure out which one of those it even is. None of these are destructive, so it's all good. The worst case scenario is I make a Facebook post as you. And you'll have to close a bunch of windows when <laughs> you get your laptop back. Because I don't recall which one is which. Oh, that just takes you to my website. Okay, let me try six then. Yeah, you think I should have wrote this down before I start screwing around with it. I wonder what it's trying to do right now. Oh, it, it, that, this one is the Facebook one. Uh, but depending on what application is currently up and running, and it starts sending keystrokes, there's some reliability issues there. Yeah, that one it tried to bring up Facebook, but he's not logged in. Had he been logged in, it would have hit the tab to find out where it needs to go to do its thing. And it made a, that quick post for me. But that's pretty much all this particular one does. But you can program it, depending on what your imagination tells you to do, to do just about anything. Thanks for letting me borrow your uh, laptop. I actually have a VM on my, uh, one of my hard drives for doing this kind of thing, but when I tried it, there's some confusion in VMware Player about whether or not the hit device is connected to the host OS or the guest OS. So, but I think it was logged in. And it oh, okay, okay. But what it did was it opens up when it does that start thing. Yeah. It opens up whatever your default web browser is. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's so I mean. under the assumption that your default web browser would be the one most likely to be the one that has the cookie. But uh, that's pretty much it. If anybody has any questions coming up, if anybody wants some IronGeek.com stickers, I got some of those as well. And uh, that's pretty much all I got. Any questions? Well, this isn't technically a 
our Adreno dependency, but you can plug them in the Adreno environment. The Adreno directly, without extra hacking, doesn't support PID directly. But I'm just now getting into microcontrollers and Arduino, so I'm not sure I can answer the question. Yeah. Exactly. That would be. Now this one I want to look at. There's nothing else that I want to try to make my own, you know, a hardware key logger. But uh, I don't know as of yet. It is something I want to look at. As I get better with programming these things, it would be something I'd be interested in looking at. Check out my website. If you can figure out how to do it, let me know. Because I'd be interested in uh, putting out the code for that. All right. Well, that's pretty much all I got. If anybody wants to come up and see these things, here they are. Let's go ahead and sit them down here. And uh, I just got to clear out before the next guy comes in to speak.